Welcome to the SAT Mathematics uh, Tutorials. Uh, in this video, we are looking at a bunch of things actually. So elementary statistics, if I had to summarize it. And uh, this video is gonna be especially short. I'm trying to get it done within 10 minutes. Let's hope that happens. And uh, so let's start with something you're very familiar with. So with the concepts of mean, median, mode, and range. Mean is the average value. How you find the average is you add each of these individual elements together and divide it by the number of elements. So we find the sum of all of these numbers and there are five numbers. So we divide it by five and we get the mean. Mode is the most common number. 73 happens once, 32 happens once, 86 happens once, but 23 appears twice. So that's 23 is uh, the mode. The median is the uh, middle value. To do this, we arrange these numbers in ascending order. And then we start canceling one number from the left, one number from the right, one number from the left, and one number from the right until we're left with only one. In this case, that's 32. Um, if you have an odd number of uh, elements, you can, you can uh, figure out which element is the median by uh, dividing that by two and rounding it up. So five elements, we divide by two, 2.5, round it up three. So the third element is the median. Um, range is just the largest number minus the smallest number. So 86 minus 23, and that comes to be 63. Uh, there are some important cases where it's slightly different. The mean and the range stay the same. The mode, sometimes you will see that uh, there are two modes so in this case both 23 and 48 appear the most number of times which is two times so the, in this case both of them are modes here all the numbers each appear only once and therefore all of these are modes and therefore we can also say that there is no single mode right median now when sometimes you'll have an even number of um, elements right and so again the step is to uh, list them out in ascending order cancel from the left cancel from the right but this time you will wait until you have just two numbers remaining right um, what you then do is you find the average of these two numbers and that is your median so in this case we cancelled 23 cancelled 86 then we cancel the next 23 and then 73 we were left with 32 and 41 in the middle we found their average that is 36.5 and that is the median over here and uh, that is uh, very important uh, so yeah, the median how you calculate the median changes based on whether you have an odd or even number of elements but in principle it's still easy Another kind, a special kind of question that the SAT generally gives when it comes to averages is they'll ask you to find uh, the value of one component rather than find the average itself. So they might say someone like Ronald scored, did five tests where he scored 40, 32, 30 and 38 and a mystery number of marks X respectively and they'll give you his average so they might, they might say it was 36 and so they'll ask you how much did he score so what was X right in the five, fifth test. So um, Given that we know his average was 36, we can find the total number of score, the total number of marks he scored in all his tests combined. Uh, that would be 36 into 5 because his average is 36 and there were 5 tests in total. That is 180. Now we know his scores in 4 tests. We know his scores in 4 tests. So if we subtract he, the, he, his scores in each of these 4 tests from 180, we'll be left with just x which is the answer. In other words, we have an expression of this sort. Uh, we have an equation of this sort so and finally we get x to be uh, 40 uh, Sorry, that's a typo over here. It is supposed to be 180. That's my bad and uh, so This means that he scored 40 marks in his final test um, Now we're gonna look at tables right now. I haven't seen this personally in the SAT, but uh, in some places it's implied where um, the data is grouped and uh, it may be better if you know these formulas to calculate the mean and uh, median etc so the method of draw of uh, calculating mean when when uh, one day when one particular value is occurs five times one value occurs seven times is this safety formula so what the formula asks us to do is multiply the score into the frequency so find that product 60 91 14 into 812 15 into 10 150 add all of them together that's what the sigma sign is for and then divided by the total frequency that's 5 plus 7 12 12 plus 8 20 20 plus 10 30 so the sum of fx of all the values of fx that occur all four divided by the total or the sum of the free individual frequencies which is 30 and that will give you the average right so uh in this case the 
F is here, uh, F is listed under frequency, which happens in the second table too. But over here, it is very clear what we need to take as X, we need to take 12, we need to take 13 respectively. But over here, we see that there is a range given rather than any particular value of X. In this case, what we begin to do is we take the middle value as um, X. So in zero to, to five, we take the bracket 2.5 as X. Here we take 7.5, 12.5, 17.5, and so on. Um, so what you're gonna then do is 2.5 into three plus 7.5 into nine plus 12.5 into six plus 17.5 into two divided by three plus nine plus six plus two, which is 20. So that or the sum of all those products divided by 20, and you would get the mean. Now the mode is just the most common uh, value still. So over in the first table, we see which one, which value has the highest frequency. Uh, 10 appears to be the highest frequency and it belongs to 15. So 15 is the mode. Similarly in the second table uh, There is no particular there is no way in which we can narrow it to one particular value But we can narrow it to the range the 5 to 10 range occurs most frequently at 9 times. So that is the mode Median values are the middle values The method uh, to do it is you take the total frequency and divide by 2 in the first table It's 30 30 divided by 2 is 15 and you will try to figure out where the 15th element occurs So the first five elements are here the next seven are here so these are 12 elements in total and it's 20 elements by number 14 this means that the 13th 14th 15th 16th 17th 18th 19th and 20th element all have a score of 14 and therefore the therefore the median occurs at a score of 14 right so you divide the total frequency by two and figure out when the cumulative at in which bracket the cumulative total crosses the median Yes, so just to give another example over here The total frequency is 20 20 divided by 2 is 10 so I need to figure out where the time in which bracket the 10th element occurs So the first three occurs here the fourth element right up to the right up to the 12th elements occurs in 5 in the bracket 5 to 10 the 10th element is between the third and the 12th element Therefore the median over here is also 5 5 to 10, right? Another thing that comes frequently in the SAT is uh, not frequently, but is something you should know about is box plots. So they are these kind of diagrams. You must have seen them earlier. So uh, this bar means the lowest is the lowest uh, the element that scored the lowest value. So suppose this was uh, displaying how much students scored uh, in a test out of fifty. So the fact that this line is here means that the lowest the student scored was 5. Similarly, the highest the student scored was 45 because it is here, we need it from the scale below. So that means no one scored below 5 and no one scored above 45. Then we have some important definitions. Uh, something you might notice, uh, you might have noticed with the SAT is uh, there is a percentile system. So if you score something above uh, the 1540, 1540, you're set to be in the 99th percentile, which means he scored better than 99% of the candidates who have taken the test, right? Similarly, the lowest quartile is the bottom 25%. So if you're at the lowest, if you're at the low, uh, if you're at the lower quartile, it means 25 per, you performed better than 25% of the candidates. So 25% of the people scored below you. If you're at the median, which is represented by this line, 50% scored better than you and you scored better than 50%, right? So you're in the middle. If, you if you're in the upper quartile, that means you scored better than 75% of the people or only 25% of the candidates did better than you, right? The interquartile range is the, is the difference between the upper quartile and the lower quartile. And the range is just the high score minus the lowest score. In this case, the lower quartile is, it is always represented by the start of the box and it is approximately 11. The end of the box represents the upper quartile and this line that comes in the middle of the box in the middle of the box represents the medium median that comes to be about 24 and the upper quartile comes to be about 27. This means 25% of the candidates scored below 11 out of 50, 50% of the candidates scored less than 24 out of 50 and 75% of the candidates scored lesser than 27 out of 50, right? That's what it means respectively. The interquartile range is 16 this is supposed to be an equal to my apologies uh, this means that 
the difference between the uh, 75th percentile and the 25th percentile is just 16 marks, right? And the range is just the highest score minus the lowest score, which is 45 minus 5, that's 40, right? And the final thing we're looking at is standard deviation and we've kind of crossed 10 minutes, apologies for that. Let's hope we can finish in 12 or 14 at latest. Um, anyway, so standard deviation is just how much members of a group, by how much members of a group differ from the average member. So by how much members in the group differ from the, their mean value. So the actual formula for standard deviation is what, what you can see on your screen right now. Over here, X is, the resp is one member of the group. The X with the bar on the top is the mean. N is the number of members. So uh, for each member, you find the, you find the difference between uh, the mean and the member, you t and you square that, right? You do that for each of the respective members, adding it up each time. Then you divide it by the number of members and take the root of that. That will give you standard deviation, right? And that is the formula for standard deviation. And if it is something you can remember, great. Otherwise, learn to calculate standard deviation on your calculator. But uh, in general, something I've noticed with the SAT questions about standard deviation is they're very, very easy. In this case, there is kind of a hack. I do suggest you uh, learn the formula because the formula is useful and is part of all syllabuses. You're going to have to remember it at one point or the other. What you're doing in this formula is again finding is again finding the absolute difference between the mean and each member, squaring that, doing that for each respective member and, and finding the sum of all these squares. Then you're dividing it by the number of members and you're taking the root of that, right? Um, so that is how you fa calculate the standard deviation. But uh, given how easy the SAT questions are and uh, given that there is um, there is another way to calculate a very rough approximation it's not a correct way of doing it but it is a good rough approximation it is a good hack I will show you that hack so in case you forget that formula um, half of the range is a good approximation for standard deviation so often all your SAT standard deviation questions will be like, select the option that has the smallest standard deviation or the one that has the largest standard deviation, right? So all you need to do is find the range for each of these options and divide it by two. Here the range is six, divide by two, three. Here the range is four, divide by two, two. Range is 10, divide by two, five. Range is two, divide by two, one, right? And um, so we can say that the uh, we can say that d yields the smallest value and therefore we can automatically say that d has the smallest standard deviation right and uh, we can also see that if we actually calculate the standard deviation over here for the first value is 2.24 the second value is 1.58 the third value is 4.12 and the fourth value is 0.71 using that formula we see that the smallest standard deviation corresponds to the smallest value of range divided by 2 and the largest standard deviation corresponds to the largest value of range divided by 2. Therefore, this is an accurate method, not an accurate method, a reliable hack rather uh, to um, quickly approximate which option has the smallest standard deviation or which option has the largest standard deviation and that tends to be the only questions the, the SAT asks regarding standard deviation. So this is a very good hack again. And in the next video, we're going to look at algebra. And with that, thank you guys. Have a great day. Finish it within 14 minutes. Yay!